I have a question from Luke 16, 16. It says that the law and the prophets were until John. And since that time, the kingdom of God is being preached. Now, I, I want us first of all to understand, could you explain the law and then the prophets first? Well, that is a very interesting question. We thank God for this brilliant question. The Bible says in Luke 16, 16, that the law and the prophets were until John. What it simply means is that God has his timetable for the world. And some particular time, God was running the time with a table program on the law. And another time came, he was running it on a table of the prophets. And then finally, the third table was the kingdom of God. So in effect, the timetable is demarcated in three parts. The beginning part being the law, the middle part being the prophets, and the end part being the kingdom. Okay? Now, why the law? The law is because if you are making or establishing a nation or a gathering of people, a town, a community, a village, the first thing you need is to constitute what we call law. That is why nations depend on constitution to build a nation. That is why any republic that takes off, there is a constitutional uh, start, okay, because that is what or that is on the basis of what the people will be governed. So God also has planned to establish his nation on earth. So therefore he needed the law to precede the building of the nation. So the law is like a foundation laid. Okay. Then the prophets are the objects or the symbol or the representative of publicity. It's like the press release okay the foreigners to talk about what god is going to do that is why if you read the bible the prophets talked about the kingdom they expressed the kingdom demonstrated the power of the kingdom they showed us glimpses of the kingdom bit and pieces beginning from moses moses used a rod to divide the whole ocean okay moses did so many miracles those powers that were demonstrated by moses were glimpses of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is dominion, is authority, is rulership, is kingship, sovereignty, power to control, management, leadership. Okay, so the kingdom is man's restoration to who he is as Adam, who has power and dominion, okay, over all that God has created. You see, so the prophet demonstrated these powers whereby a prophet commanded the son to go back, you know, and ask her to surface on the top of the water, you know, all kinds of things. All are glimpses of the kingdom. And finally, God now said, It is time for the main thing to come. What is the main thing? The kingdom. So the law were prepared, the law was prepared for the kingdom, the prophets were prepared for the kingdom. So the main thing is the kingdom. So now is the end of the timetable. That is why the Bible said the law and the prophets were until John. So from John, the kingdom is preached. That means from John, we must preach the kingdom. But unfortunately, the devil succeeded in occupying God's people, busy doing what is wrong. What is that? Religion. So can you imagine when God put a timetable that from John's time, we should be preaching the kingdom and teaching the kingdom and living in the kingdom. Over 2,000 years, the devil succeeded in misleading us into active and busy running religion. What is religion? The philosophy of man, the ideas, the views, the intentions, the thinkings of man, not the thinkings of God. What is the thinkings of God? What is the intent of God? The kingdom. And the devil occupied us on the wrong thing. That is the wisdom of the devil. He will not get you to sin against God, but he will get you to be busy in a wrong agenda. And that is what the church of Christ has been locked up for over 2,000 years. Billions of Christians. You can imagine. It's pitiful. It's sad. 
So what it means is that since 2000 ago, we must be preaching, teaching, acting, living in the kingdom. But unfortunately, we have not. Thank God for the life of Dr. Miles, who surfaced from nowhere at the age of 13. He went asking questions and God revealed the kingdom to him. So Dr. Miles at the age of 13 started to teach his father, who is a Baptist minister, kingdom. Teaching him things in the Bible and the woman couldn't understand. And that is how the young man started to preach kingdom. And in fact, his historic information shows that he was rejected by the church. They said he was involved in a cult. But thank God he was able to move the youth. And he continued, he didn't give up. To spend time teaching and preaching the kingdom for 34 years. When God took him home. We bless him for his glorious memory. He is a great man. In fact, we are believing God that God will give us some strength to do things to approve that this is a true man of God. So what God really means is that this is the time of the kingdom. It has even overpassed. We have even failed. We have delayed God for over 2,000 years and 15, 2015 years not doing what he wanted us to do. It's sad. Very, very pitiful. That is why we have come to discover kingdom Partially, I used to operate in kingdom partially some years back. So when you talk about kingdom preacher, they, you know, this country, they will tell you, Prophet Peter Namo used to do kingdom foundation, kingdom covenant, kingdom seminars, you know. But now the full message has been gathered and we are out to explode with the kingdom. We thank God for everything and we are just beginning. So the kingdom of God is what actually we are supposed to be preaching. Why will you preach born again? When you are supposed to preach kingdom, Jesus preached the kingdom of God, which attracted Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, look, the kingdom you talked about, I liked it. I enjoyed it and I wanted it and I want to know how to enter that kingdom. Then Jesus said, you must be born again. Now we are preaching born again. Now you preach born again to people, the people get born again. And to do what? You just get born again and they are sitting there. Running church, clapping church, sitting down, dancing in church, and they don't know the use of the born again. That is why it is not appropriate to preach born again. It is appropriate to preach the kingdom. Then when people are interested in the kingdom, then you will now present to them born again. So this is what we are supposed to do. Why do you preach crucifixion? Why do you preach the blood? Why do you preach the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? It is not proper because you need to preach the kingdom first. When the people are interested, then now you will tell them that that is why the blood came. That is why the resurrection came. That is why the death came. It is to make access for you to enter the kingdom. So all these things we are busy preaching, which Jesus never preached, are means to the ultimate reason why he came to the earth. What is the ultimate reason why? The kingdom. He said it himself in Luke 4, 43. He said, I must as well preach the gospel of the kingdom in other cities also. For this cause, in other verses, he said, for this reason, in other places, he said, for this is the reason why I was sent. It's clear. And the Father, the Father God himself has expressed himself in Luke 12, 32, that it is my pleasure to give you the kingdom. God's pleasure is to give us the kingdom. God's pleasure is not the resurrection. God's pleasure is not his death. It's not in the blood. It's not the cross. It's not born again. His pleasure is the kingdom. So let's get things right. This is the season. This is the overpass season of the kingdom. In fact, we should be running over time on the kingdom because we have delayed it for over 2,000 years. And that is what I'm calling all men of God with all humility. Come and let's learn together. Let's get the right thing done. Otherwise, what Jesus said will happen to us. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 11, Jesus said, So it is people shall come from the east and the west and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the children of the kingdom shall be thrown out in outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is sad. I don't want this to happen to us. It shouldn't happen to Christians. It shouldn't happen to believers. And he said again about the banquet, the uh, banquet of uh, the parable of the banquet, Matthew 22. He said, everyone was invited as a special guest who are Christians. But when the time was up, they gave excuses. 
everybody want to do their own everybody want to say their own so nobody came and it made only worldly people come into the kingdom so my brother my sister let's watch these dangerous warnings so that we don't become victim so does it mean that the the law and the prophets have become null and void or are they useless once the kingdom has arrived now they become dormant in the sense that their mission has been achieved that's why jesus himself said i did not come to cancel the law but i came for it to be fulfilled in other words the law and the prophets what they were saying what they came for is what is the kingdom so the kingdom is now fulfilling what they came for or what they were saying or what they meant to do okay so the law is still there so we can only go back to the law as a reference point we can go back to the prophets as a reference point to build the kingdom okay so the kingdom when you talk about the kingdom then you make reference now just now i spoke to you i made reference to what Jesus said about the kingdom. So I made reference about the glimpses of the kingdom, which Moses and Co. demonstrated. That is the law. And the prophets, what the prophet did to show the power of the kingdom, that is the prophets. How the prophet made the axe head come to float on the water, that is the prophets. How Moses divided the oceans, that is the law. So we are referring them to make the kingdom manifest. But they are not to be taken as we used to do before because when it was their time it was their time now it is the kingdom's time and we must be busy with the kingdom okay so um in the law we have the ten commandments now in the kingdom are we supposed to follow it or not yes in the kingdom you can't operate in the kingdom without law okay the ten commandments which is the law says that that shall not kill that shall not steal so when you come to the kingdom it manifests this now, this time you are not learning that shall not kill. This time you are living that shall not kill. You are living in it. Okay. You are living a life that you shouldn't kill. You are living a life that you shouldn't steal. You are living a life that you shouldn't hate. You shouldn't uh, hate. You know, you should love. You see, so what the law said, what the prophet said, is now requested to be manifested. You understand? Okay. Uh -huh, that's what it means. Okay. It is not to be abandoned. That's why Jesus said, I did not come for it to be cancelled, but I came for it to be fulfilled. So how do you fulfill it? It is manifestation. Okay. So we must also demonstrate more power than even Moses and Co. did in the kingdom. That's why Jesus made a statement one time. He said, oh, many devout men and women of God, prominent people desire to see this day. What day? The day of the kingdom. They desired to see the kingdom. They were used to demonstrate the kingdom, but they never saw it. But we have seen it, and we are living in it, but we cannot manifest it. What do we mean by we are living in it? The day Jesus died and resurrected, the kingdom started. That's why Jesus said to the people that there are some of you standing here, you will not taste death till you see the kingdom. People don't understand that scripture, but all he was meaning is that some of you are standing here, you won't die, I will die, resurrect, and then the kingdom will come. Because when Jesus died and resurrected and left, when he said, it is expedient for me to go so that the comforter will come. The arrival of the comforter manifested the kingdom on earth. Because the comforter's uh, mission is the governorship role to play on earth. So the governor of the kingdom is the Holy Ghost. Unfortunately, religion has made us to understand the Holy Ghost is to baptize us and we speak in tongues and that is all. We have been speaking in tongues for 2,000 years. But we never knew that the Holy Ghost is the governor of the kingdom. So it is the governor of the nation of God. And he has been waiting for us to come to him to show us how to establish God's kingdom and God's nation and God's government. I believe that the time is now up. We are going to teach people to understand the mission of the Holy Ghost so that we can establish God's government, God's nation, and God's kingdom. Thank you very much.